And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Wednesday night spotlight. We got Maokai this week. We're going to be playing three different Maokai decks in ranked with different regions as well. But first, before we get to that, let's figure out who are we going to be spotlighting it next week on our spotlight stream. Usually it's our Wednesday night stream next week because we're going to have the new expansion and all the card changes and everything like that um on wednesday coming out so we'll do the spotlight on tuesday right because we only want to do that beforehand so to determine which champion it's going to be as you all know if you've seen this before we're just gonna be using our random number generator there are 61 champions here in legends of runeterra so we're gonna just click here random number one to 61 which champion will it be it's gonna be champion number 46 well, 46, I kind of feel like maybe we've gotten that number before. We may have to re-roll for the first time, but I'm not not I'm not exactly sure, but let's see. All right, so Diana's number four, right? We just count, count our champions, one, two, three, four, and we're going to go down the side. So 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36. Heimerdinger is 40. So we're at 46. So that means Swain is 44, so two more after Swain is going to be Thresh. Okay, no, we have not had Thresh yet. So, all right, so we're going to have Thresh for our Champion Spotlight Night next week. We will build some Thresh decks. That'll be pretty interesting. So that's going to be next week. But until then, we have some Maokai decks to play today, and we got a... Very, very uh, basic Maokai deck here to start with. You know, like the um, most popular Maokai deck for sure. It's going to be the Sea Monsters. Um, also with the deep keywords, we're calling it Deep Sea Monsters. Um, very popular Maokai deck. Um, because with our Champion Spotlight Night, what we're trying to do is to build competitive decks with different regions. And so sometimes we will play some of the, the more popular decks with the Champions. Um, and this one's going to be with Bilgewater. So this will be our, our Bilgewater Shadow Isles deck. We got Maokai. We got Nautilus. The goal of this deck is to be deep. So that means we need to be tossing a lot of cards from our deck. And uh, whenever we're deep, then all of our sea monsters are going to get plus three, plus three, and do some uh, crazy cool stuff and be a lot cheaper and all that kind of stuff. So this is the, this is the deep list that I uh, put together today. Uh, that I want to play. A lot of people don't play. A lot of people don't play three Maokai anymore, but I, I think Maokai is great. We're playing three of them, and plus it's Maokai Spotlight Night, so you know we're playing three of them. Um, I still like the Slaughter Docs a lot. Not many people are playing Slaughter Docs these days, but I'm a huge fan of the Slaughter Docs. So let's get some of those in there. Um, sea Scarab has proven to be absolutely incredible. It's just like Maokai the follower. Um, so we're going to be having a lot of Sea Scarabs in our decks today. Uh, yeah, every deck has three Sea Scarab. <laughs> I think it's a great card with Maokai. Um, let's see. We're going to have Lure the Depths to be able to help find Sea Scarabs and Devour Depths and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, it should be a pretty cool little deck here. So Deep Sea Monsters. We're going to be playing our five games in ranked. And I honestly think Rek'Sai looks pretty strong. Now, you can really only play it with all Lurk stuff, right? So it's Rek'Sai is going to be super narrow in in that respect of like it, it can really only fit when you're playing every single you know like all the lurkers because rexi level two like the level two champion looks super super powerful level one looks pretty unplayable <laughs> with the round end put it back in your deck that looks terrible so it's uh yeah so it's gonna be either <laughs> so you really need to get the level two to be able to play which means you have to play with all the lurkers and that kind of stuff we got trundle brahm Dude, the Trundle Brom's like my favorite with these regions. I wonder if my opponent is like playing my Trundle Brom deck. That's like my favorite. Well, lucky number sevens. Looks like we're already not very good at playing deep. With this... With this mulligan. Or maybe we're just amazing. We're just going to curve out perfectly the whole game. You never know. Now we draw a three mana card. It kind of costs three. The Scar Grounds. See, now we draw the three mana card. I was just off one turn. Job. 
All right, get to work, Slaughter Dogs. I'm gonna need ya to get to work. Sparkle fly. They're gonna have a buff Braum. Alright, so we didn't have a very good start at all. Our first five rounds. We had three cards <laughs> to play the first five rounds. But hopefully we have a lot of power in the late game. And we can make up for it. That wasn't great, but the good news about that is my opponent kind of spent their turn. You know, like we got to put a 4 4 into play and they spent their turn uh, just playing pump spells. Yeah, not great, but could be worse. Yeah, their deck's cool. It's definitely the kind of deck that I like playing. Seems like it'd be a good Soraka deck. Also, but yeah, like lots of buff spell, you know, pump spells and stuff like that. Definitely a pretty cool deck. Alright, so we're four away from deep. That means we're three away. Our card we draw for turn is two away. So playing Shipwreck Hoarder will have us go deep. I can do that or I can just play... Like, do I want to just play Nautilus? I probably should just play Nautilus. Yeah, we should probably just play Nautilus. The endless march. The deep I was going to say, like, are we not drawing... <laughs> We're not drawing a sea monster here, or what? All right, so that should get us our other sea monster. We're now deep. Rush is really good. Bone stack pretty sweet. Do I want their Braum to level up or not? I guess it's okay if it does. I do want to get rid of the Sea Scarab. I don't want to continually toss cards now. That's a good one to toss, though.
fight another day. This lie would have been nice. So we still have three Maokais in the deck. We got 14 cards. I don't know if I actually want to play this Sea Scarab like we talked about. I don't want to just continually toss cards. But I guess if since we have the treasures, maybe we do want to just keep tossing cards. Well, that doesn't seem great for me. Blood and guts, gold and glory. Ooh. That ship looks familiar. Negative 30. <laughs> so they'll have two things that can block right now. We challenge one with the Jaw Hunters. They have one thing that can block. I think they're pretty dead. I can play like the Sea Scarab, but then they get to like choose their blockers. Man, that was a great tear of the tides. Good job, Jaw Hunters. And there we go. That was the highest of rolls. Does not forget. All right, we got Siver Garen. Hooday! What is up, Hooday? Bring in the hype. Thank you, Tyler. I'm just gonna mulligan this thing. Keep the rest. Excuse me. All right, we got lots of good threes. Okay, cool. You found you found where to find the uh, invoke cards. Cool. Yeah, you can see them in, in client. I don't want to meet whatever woke you up. Gonna find a gift for Renekton, right, Arda? So if they want to fearsome hunter challenge that thing, that's cool with me. Let's get this slaughtered ox going. That probably makes a little bit more sense. They have a real big delay on that Lure of the Depths card. I was really hoping they would play Sivir. It was unlikely, but I was definitely hoping that. They had a place ever right there. Take experience gives. All right, so we're gonna be going like wander and see scarab here. We must all do our duty. So next card has challenger. I don't know. Don't. Honor is the rust on a dull blade. Yeah, Silver with Challenger is pretty nuts. Silver with Challenger is pretty nuts. See what I've learned? Those were some bad tosses, tossing our other two Devlin Wanderers. So bad toss. Five away from deep. Don't touch it. Maokai Nasus is gonna be our yeah, one of our decks later. I think it's gonna be pretty sweet. Similar-ish to Thresh Nasus, but more controlly. Alright, 
now that we're deep, we will have the three blockers. We're not just dead immediately. Treasure trove, pretty sweet. Plate worm egg, also pretty sweet. We're getting some high rolls here. We love it when they run. Let's get some blockers. <laughs> yeah, blockers are good. There we go. All right, we 2-0. and Dude, Ship Recorder is awesome. All right, we're facing Aurelia Azir. I had to stop after that when the opponent just gave up. You're not wrong. All right, so we're going to keep Maokai Jettison. I kind of keep Lure of the Depths. Man, we're going to be behind, though. Like, can I play Lure on... Three. Can I keep lure? I probably can't keep lure. Nah, I probably can't. Oh, okay. This is gonna be rough. Okay, we're gonna have to keep high rolling in the deep. Nineteen away from deep. That's, so we're basically there. Ah, obviously we wanted the one cost. Right, we, we really wanted another one of the uh, sea scarabs right there. Just living the life. They are just living the life. This is like a man. This is just an incredible first four rounds. Putting the shape stone and everything. Yeah, that's pretty good. We need this lifesteal thing. I guess I'm already dead. Yeah, must be nice. Yeah, we didn't have a very good hand. No, we did not have a very good hand, but um, I don't. I don't think our good hands beat this hand anyway, right? Like it doesn't. I don't think that that's going to be the case anyway. Protect our grove. Looks pretty good. I'll take it. Yeah, beat your eyes as a bean really is here with deep before. You just need the right hand. I, again, I, no hand that we have is going to win that matchup. Like, there's not. We this is not possible. To honor the fallen. We need them to not have an amazing hand. Right, like. If they have like a average to below average hand, I think we have a really good shot of winning kinda you know, even even if we have you know, if we have that same hand. It's kinda more about their hand than ours. They're not gonna really play anything here though, like I need to draw hunters. From the sky. 
So it's always good to get the slaughter docks in as early as possible. Obviously, the 4 5 Dragon is the most likely card that they're playing right now. It's not bad. Single combat, of course, is a really valuable removal spell. We didn't even trade, you know, we didn't even trade, like, down on mana on it. Like, we just traded two, two mana for, for that. Nothing wrong with that. Alright, so we're at, we're ten away. That's pretty great. Got rid of two single combats. Single combat's really good against Maokai, of course. So now our Slaughter Dock should be enabled. seem much reason to play the Maokai right now and just like have it uh, have the Maokai be vulnerable to whatever it's my United States of whatever all right so if we play Maokai here and then toss yeah so Maokai dredge dredgers would level up Maokai So this will get them down to four cards, and, you know, they already have... If they play a dragon, they have to draw one of those, right? It's like we're, we're making it like where they don't have very many cards left. And now if they want to play, like, a Shyvana... <laughs> draw another card. They're down to three. I only tossed one. <laughs> it's just all champions besides that one card. So I just have, yeah, five champions and the two treasures. Oh, that's pretty funny. So this is just draw two treasures. That's cool. I guess we'll just draw two treasures. All right, so obviously their plan is um, judgment. Like that's the only plan that kind of makes sense for them. Right, like that's like the only plan that makes sense, right? I just want to play this treasure trove right now. Two cards left. I mean, it had to have like. Yeah, as I say, they'd have to have like that. Yeah, they're they're definitely setting up judgment. So I don't really have any... There's just no reason to do anything right now, right? Because, like, what? They have one card left. What are they... Yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do? Like, how are they killing me? Good job, Maokai. See? First, like, real Maokai win. Uh, definitely the... Okay, the question is, is do you think that the other two Maokai decks will be competitive? Um, Yes, on both. I think that the Maokai Mill will be the least competitive of the three decks that we're playing today. But I think it'll still... Like, I'm, I'm expecting to get, like, a 2-3 record with the Maokai Mill. And I'm expecting, like, a 3-2 record with the Maokai Na Nasus, even in Master's Rank. I think the Maokai Nasus is going to be pretty good. Um, the Mill's, Mill's a little bit more janky. Like, the Mill deck just doesn't have the interaction. 
Um, but it, if your opponent doesn't kill you very quickly, that mill deck's going to do some really cool, crazy stuff if they just don't kill us very quickly. The Maokai mill is with Callista. Um, we're going to... And it's with Piltover and so on, is the other region. Alright, so we're playing this matchup again. Um, you. I think I'm sending you back. I don't know. That card's pretty good, though. Ugh, I'd much rather have that than either of these two. Oh, man. See, like, again, <laughs> we've done some... We've had some poor mulligans here. You know, obviously we just want cards that cost like one, two, three. I should have just kept the card that cost three. Like mulligan into a five, a six, and a seven. That's not good. I did not want to mulligan into a five, a six, and a seven. My name will echo through the ages. Okay, so we got this, like, whole Beast Below thing going on. Check out these. This deck's definitely a whole lot harder to beat whenever they do have Azir than whenever they don't have Azir. Also, like saying Azir. This is the most important card. Most definitely. No mercy for those who desecrate our home. Still twelve away from D. Wish I could. I wish we could have like actually kill Azir at some point in the game. That'd be nice. Fortunately, Azir, Azir is unkillable. Too much health. Oh yeah, there, there's a lot of problems with the deck for sure, but having Azir, yeah, Azir, Emperor's Dias, Aurelia, yeah, like, again, <laughs> this is again a very, very good quality um, Aurelia Azir hand. I don't necessarily think this is a bad matchup for us, again, if they don't have a great hand, but I mean, how how do your, you know, like, do your hands really get that much better than round one sparring student, round two Emperor's Dias, round three Azir? Round four, another sparring student, and a droplet, and a um, Emperor's Dice, and then round five, Aurelia, <laughs> you know, and then, you know, attacking. And so, you know, also having the attack token round one, three, five is very important in that also. But again, it does, like, it just doesn't really even get better than this, so. Not really too ashamed of losing this. Like, I don't know what percentage of hands can possibly be better than this. Alright, so I can kill Aurelia or Azir. Which one do we kill? I kind of think it has to be Aurelia with, like, making the blade dances with all these things. I guess it's got to be Aurelia.
Not even bouncing droplet. And of course, they just have another Rillianian. Okay, so I think that the sea monsters honestly looked really, really good. We had two hands from Aurelia Zir that were very close to perfect. Um, you know, definitely within the top 5 to 10% of hands that that, that deck has. Um, you know, they, they had everything both times we played against it. And we lost those games, right? Like, we weren't, it weren't close. They weren't very competitive um, because of that. But that's when you have a incredibly good aggro deck that's you know obviously way too good for the format and there's going to be cards getting banned when that kind of deck has a top five to ten percent of hand like possible it's you know it's going to just dominate games and, and make it look not close sometimes you have to just not be afraid of, of losing games that aren't close <laughs> and and uh that so that's going to happen but besides that i think that our, our deck looked really strong like shipwreck hoarder um, really uh, did some cool stuff in here, but obviously Sea Scarab is just a really nice part of the deck, and Slaughter Docks was honestly really, really good for us in, in a lot of those games. It's a card that I think is really underrated. Many people have been cutting Slaughter Docks, but it really helped us, um, you know, turn the corner, which that's what you want to do with this Sea Monster deck, is you want to stabilize, stay alive, go deep, and then turn the corner, and the Slaughter Docks really helped turn the corner. We got one of our wins... Um, against the dragon deck um, on the back of Maokai, obliterating their uh, deck. And so that's pretty nice. That was, um, you know, because it's Maokai Spotlight Knight, so that's pretty nice. But I, I liked it. I think that I think that the sea monsters are, I think like this is a pretty solid deck, and I think it's in a good spot. Um, you know, again, I, I don't think it's necessarily that bad against the... I think obviously the the Aurelia Zier deck is going to be favored, but I don't think like the matchup is is that bad from um, just kind of looking at it. It's just you know we ran into some pretty hot opponents. And that's all right. All right. Anyway, that's going to be it here though for the Deep Sea Monsters to kick off the Maokai Spotlight Night. Those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there, and as always, feel free to leave those comments and let me know what you think of the deck. Uh, hopefully, y'all enjoyed it, and we got two more. Really cool Maokai decks with different regions, not with Bilgewater, coming up. But that's going to be it here for this one. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.